In tonight's reading, St. Paul goes on the attack. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan, on this Friday, the 11th of August, in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm glad you could join us as we end our day and our week with God's Word in prayer. As we do, this is now week 32, day 5 of reading through the New Testament in 2023. And that brings us to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. So in chapter 10, of course, St. Paul um, pushed back against the criticism that although he wrote so, so boldly and with such authority in his first letter, 1 Corinthians, um, he certainly did not have the charisma and the, 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 the eloquence of these later uh, people who claimed to be apostles. Um, and so Paul's ministry was somehow less valuable or less important or he spoke with less authority and so he addressed that in chapter 10 uh, and now he kind of turns the focus away from himself to uh, to those super apostles as he refers to them here um, and and pushes back and says why do you think why do you take them more seriously than us uh, and so let's turn to our text and see how he argues that. Second right. Corinthians chapter 11. I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me. For I feel a divine jealousy for you, since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. Indeed, I consider that I am not in the least inferior to these super-apostles. Even if I am unskilled in speaking, I am not so in knowledge. Indeed, in every way we have made this plain to you in all things. Or did I commit a sin in humbling myself so that you might be exalted, because I preached God's gospel to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you. And when I was with you and was in need, I did not burden anyone, for the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied my need. So I refrained and will refrain from burdening you in any way. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boasting of mine will not be silenced in the regions of Achaia. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. And what I am doing I will continue to do in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boasted mission they work on the same terms as we do. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an apostle, as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. I repeat, let no one think me foolish. But even if you do, accept me as a fool, so that I too might, may boast a little. What I am saying with this boastful confidence, I say not as the Lord would, but as a fool. Since many boast according to the flesh, I too will boast. For you gladly bear with fools, being wise yourselves. For you bear it if someone makes slaves of you, or devours you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or strikes you in the face. To my shame, I must say, we were too weak for that. But whatever anyone else dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool, I also dare to boast of that. 
Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I'm talking like a madman. With far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes, lest one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, in danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. And apart from other things, there's the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is made to fall, and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, he who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. At Damascus, the governor under King Aretas was guarding the city of Damascus in order to seize me. But I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. Thus far, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. So here, Paul goes on the offensive a little bit and pushes back against these super-apostles these men claiming to be apostles and even having more authority than St. Paul. And by the way, what they were teaching was that Gentiles had to be circumcised. What they were teaching was binding them back under the law of Moses once again. And so Paul attacks them on a couple of fronts. He warns that don't be deceived by appearances. These men who seemingly came all dressed up, looking incredibly fashionable, looking very wealthy and successful and prosperous and comfortable, and it sounds like once they arrived, expecting the church in Corinth to then support them in that sort of lifestyle, what they were teaching the church in Corinth, was putting them back in chains. That's really the, the crux of this whole issue. If these men came in like this, arrogant and pompous and all the rest, but came in preaching the gospel, that would be one thing. It would be bad enough, but would not be truly deadly like this is. Uh, a church can, can handle a pastor who's an idiot, but teaches uh, correct doctrine. A church can handle a pastor who you know, is arrogant, as long as he teaches true gospel, uh, tr the tr true doctrine, the true gospel. But these men were not only coming, coming in full of arrogance, full of themselves, waving their credentials, boasting about all of the things that made them greater apostles than Paul, but they were teaching things that put God's people back in chains, put them back under the law, put them back under the burden of what they needed to do to be worthy of Jesus Christ. And so Paul cuts that argument short. He attacks that issue especially. Again, reminding them that even Satan is able to masquerade as an angel of light. He's not Paul is not necessarily saying that these men are literally demons. But certainly 
by coming in and preaching and teaching in a way that only serves their own interests. They are doing the devil's work. And then beautifully, Paul kind of disarms their whole argument by boasting not in his credentials, uh, not in his accomplishments, but in what he's suffered, of what he's endured for the sake of preaching the gospel. That is what he boasts in. And that really is one of his powerful uh, arguments, that he is, in fact, presenting the truth of Jesus Christ. Let's close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. As always, thank you for joining us as we end our day and our week with God's word and prayer. God willing, we will see you on Sunday, either here in person or on this live stream, both for worship at 9 a.m. as usual and or Bible study after. Uh, but in the meantime, God's blessings on your night and on your weekend.